Congratulations um, on the big win over here to your right. Uh, <laughs> after all these years, you know, the, the, the try and strike force, the ones in the UFC, and now you have a major promotional belt. Talk to me about how you're feeling right now. You know, I feel great. I feel like um, all those opportunities were just lessons. There are mistakes and things I had to take away from it so I could be prepared for today. And it was meant to be with Bellator and not any of the other organizations. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, uh, the crowd beh was behind you and they really erupted uh, when you got that finish. The place went crazy. Um, what, what, were you, what was going through your head when you felt uh, Mike Beltran step in there? Um, I was I was super excited. I felt that once I broke her grip and I was able to knee slice over the bicep uh, and I had that underhook, I knew that whether she turned and I was able to get a finish from, from that position or whether she stayed where she was at and I was able to finish with a ground pound, which is ultimately what happened, I knew that once that grip broke, if the fight was over, I knew it was done. It was just a matter of how it was going to end. And the, up until that point, I mean, was the fight kind of playing out the way you had expected? Was there anything that surprised you in there? No, no, I definitely felt like um, I played a little bit more into her strike than what I anticipated. Um, I was surprised at how well she took the kicks and was able to endure it. Uh, there have been other people where I've kicked them and it tore their bites or tore their calf and they were out. So um, I was really impressed at how well she took it and that kind of played a factor into um, what I needed to do. And then I wasn't doing more takedowns like I was supposed to. And so I definitely should have been implementing those earlier in the rounds because they were successful when I went for them. She seemed from the time that the fight ended all the way through when we watched her walk by us, she was not very happy with the stoppage. Um, I guess what were your thoughts? Did you feel like it was, as one of the three people that were involved in it, did you feel like it was uh, a good call by referee Mike Beltran? Yeah, I think he stepped in at the right time. I think if he'd let it continue, it could have been a broken orbital. It could have been her going unconscious. I think that when he stepped in, it was the right thing to do to protect the fighter because she wasn't doing anything to um, correctly advance her position safely, and she wasn't doing anything to defend it. So if she's kept taking it, it, you know, like ending a fight that way, I'd much rather see the fighter step up and us be able to shake hands rather than her go to the hospital and not remember it happened. So I think he did the right thing. Hi, champ over here. Uh, you embraced Alima after the fight. Uh, did you, uh, what did you say to her after the fight? I didn't even get a chance to talk to her. I was trying to, to get past her to hug her, just to let her know. I mean, we've you said it before, we're sister wives. We're, we're always friends. We've been there since the beginning. I mean, I was the first person that signed her up at her gym when she started on MMA. I was her first training partner, walked her through a lot of her training camps. And we've always been there supporting. I mean, she the last time that we came out to Hawaii, I went to her luau, and she split it as a birthday party for my son. So we are close. Like, we know that someday we're going to fight, but it better be the two of us, two people that care about each other and can hurt each other than smile and laugh about it than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And then are you going to party with Alima maybe, like, after her fight, maybe if she gets a win? Yeah, whether she wins or loses, she always throws an amazing party in a luau and invites everybody. Uh, so I would love to go celebrate with her and be there for her. I, I support Lima just as much as she supports me, and that's even in the fun times. Uh, and uh, do you think a, a immediate rematch with Velasquez is something that uh, might be in the cards for you? I hope not. You know, um, I, I get kind of bored with rematches. I like to see something different and kind of change it up. And I love an opportunity to let somebody else in the division work their way up and to see uh, what else I can show off in, in the cage. Hey Liz, congratulations on, you know, third time's the charm, we got, got it done, right? Uh, obviously, um, heavy is the head that bears the crown. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you've been in championship fights before, but now you were able to capture the crown. Are you going to, you know, take some time or rest on your laurels or are you going to have that Kobe Bryant mentality and say the job is not finished? It, it's not finished. I have a lot of evolution to be done, um, not only for myself, but for my training partners. I have a lot of people that they sacrificed their bodies and their time and they were willing to come in and to help me out for my fight camp. So I owe them. I need to go back and I need to grow with them. And also the more that I can go out there and I can advance and I can grow, the more I can take back to my team to help them. And it's all about the well-being of the whole team and all of us advancing, not just myself. Okay, so um, so when you finished at the last, at, from the body lock to the takedown, what, how did you do it? Was it like outside trip that you, you used? Uh, I used as her foot was coming up and she was trying to um, evade the knee. I used it to off balance her and rotate her with the body lock. Okay. Just kind of following up on that. The first couple of takedowns, it seemed like, you know, it kind of hard to, to maybe get a lot of damage done or get a lot done. But did you kind of feel going on that, it, that, that you were kind of setting some things up if you could get her down again? Yeah, I was definitely feeling um, that she was tired with having to defend off that it was really just spent with her trying to, to be safe when she was on the ground and on bottom. And I could feel her breathing heavier and heavier and feeling weaker every time that I was able to get a grip of her. So I knew that if I could get her to the ground, she wouldn't be able to stop me. And then they played kind of a cool package of you and your background and your military background before the fight. I'm sure you were getting ready for the fight, but just 
maybe not the biggest crowd you've ever found front in front of, but what was it like? You no, know, it was all first responders, all people like that. Just what, what was kind of your emotions going to the cage? That means more to me, honestly. It could be a, a group of 10 people. It could be people from a squadron. When it's military, when it's first responders, the sacrifices that they make in their lives for, for the sake of other people, it's unselfish. And it's always putting aside their free time, their lives to give to other people. So that means more to me than doing it in front of a large crowd that paid for it, is being able to give back and give a free show for them to enjoy something like this. Yeah. And then lastly for me, I know it's down the line, but... Uh, Maybe find Lima in this building, you know, tomorrow night, it's going to be to the public. It's going to be pretty, pretty full. Um, just what would you think about coming back in this arena and fighting her here? Maybe, you know, I'd love just to come back to Hawaii. Um, Hawaii, I have such a connection with it. Reminds me of being back in Okinawa and it seemed just like home. So I loved it. Nothing, everything I kept picturing. I, I told my wife when I first signed with Bellator, I'm like, Hey, wouldn't it be really cool if I won the belt in Hawaii? And then here I am fighting for the belt winning in Hawaii. So to be able to, to come back here and do it again, it's such a beautiful island, a beautiful culture. I would love to just uh, be able to experience it more and share it with them. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Jay. Hey, Liz, congratulations on the uh, win tonight. Uh, I just wanted to start with uh, the kind of rain that you uh, want to have. I mean, obviously, you've had some time to, to think about this, really. Is it title defenses, big names? If Bellator were to open a 135-pound division, would that interest you? What's kind of, you know, in your mind, what would be optimal? Uh, there are three things would really be optimal. As much as I would love to see a 135 division, I think that one thing that's unique that they don't have out there is a 130 division. Uh, at 125, I feel like I'm cutting a little bit too low when I get to 125. 135 is a little too big. I think 130 would be a perfect division. And what that would really do is it would start to cut off those 145ers that are making enormous cuts to do 135 and blowing back up. And it would be true people that fight at that, that division. So that's one that I'd really love to see. And of course, to have two belts in two different divisions would be amazing. Uh, another thing I'd really like to do is I would like to go to, to fight in Japan, whether that be in Okinawa or mainland Japan. I would love to take a show out there and have an opportunity to go home because I haven't been home since 2006. And like I was saying, as much as I, I love Hawaii and have a connection, I'd really love to be able to go home and show my family and to uh, bring a unique twist on being in Japan. A lot of the fighters that have been there are, are Japanese fighters. You know, and to have an American fighter that connects with it is so different and unique that I think that it would really be great for Bellator and a great opportunity that I would like to take advantage of. And then, you know, prior to arriving in Bellator, you'd gone through this stretch of eight straight decisions. Now you've got three finishes and four fights. Is that something that you, you really made a focus and buckled down on? You know, it really is. I think that um, there are a lot of different factors that were contributing, not only to my decisions, but my losses previously. Um, I think that I was kind of holding myself back, and I know that to be true. I'm now working with coaches that they're not like any coaches I've ever met. They're, they're people that are truly invested in their fighters, and you do find that with a lot of coaches, but not just invested in their fighters, but they want to grow. And you constantly, like we have our coach Charles and our coach Vince, they both go out and they do seminars all the time in all different forms of martial arts to take unique experiences from each of those to bring it back for our team. And they utilize a game plan specific for them. They understand different the fighters. They know how to talk differently to everyone. And that's not really something I see. I'll see coaches that they absolutely want the best for their fighters and they care with them, they love them, but they're not going out there growing themselves and trying to bring all this information back. And I do see that with these coaches. And that to me is amazing is, is I'm like, hey, I want to try something crazy like this. Like, yeah, go try that. Absolutely. Just don't break yourself, kill yourself, but go for it. Um, and I love that. I love being able to, to go out there and be like, hey, I just learned this. And they're like, hey, why don't you show the team and see if we can't learn it all together? And um, that's really helped me to be able to pull the trigger and understand that um, I have more to offer and I just need to be able to have an opportunity to show it off and believe in myself. And it's because I have coaches that are giving me new tools and constantly challenging me and pushing me. All right. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank you. Recording stopped.